Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problem out of this book here, the official study guide, version 7, 2025. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is our lesson number 9. We are on page number 101. And today we'll deal with a new concept, a concept called least common denominator. And we're going to do that using this problem. Least common denominator. Let's take a look at it. We're being asked to arrange these three quantities in order. Now when they say arrange them in order, arrange them in order simply means arrange them from the least to the greatest. They don't have to say that. It's understood. If I tell you to arrange this number in order, 3, 2, and 7, it's understood that you'll arrange them as 2, 3, and 7. That's what it means to arrange them in order. You're starting from the least, going to the greatest. Let's see what we can do. But here we're not dealing with whole numbers. We're dealing with fractions. And the only way we can compare fractions is when they have the same bottom. Same number that appears in the bottom. The same number that appears in the bottom is called the common denominator. Because of course the bottom is called the denominator and the denominator has to be the same for all of them. They, they have to have this common denominator. Not only they need to have common denominator, but it helps if you keep the denominator as small as possible. Hence the least common denominator, which is sometimes also referred to simply as by its acronym LCD. What is the least number that we can think of that is a multiple of 5 and a 6 and a 15? That's the question. What's the smallest number that we can think of that is a multiple of 5, 6 and 15? Here's, here's the way to figure it out. This is very straightforward, but here's the method. So you write down your 5, your 6 and a 15, like that. 5, 6 and 15. And you start with the smallest number. Can we divide them by 2? The answer is no, only one number goes by two, at least two of them, if instead of three here, instead of three numbers, if you had four or five or six numbers, at least two of them has to be divisible by whatever you're going to put here. Six goes in, six can be divided by two, but not none, none, neither of the other two. So the smallest number that we can think of is three. Because three, we can use three to divide six and we can use three to divide fifteen. Let's do that. And the five is just going to come down by itself. Six divided by two is... 6 divided, by, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. We can go one more round. We have a 5 and a 5, we can divide by 5. So it becomes 1, this becomes 2, and this becomes 1. And when you're left with only 1, that's where the story ends. And now we have our denominator, the least common denominator, would simply be the product of these three numbers, 3, 5, and a 2. 3 times 5 times 2. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 times 2 is 30. There you go. The least common denominator, the least common denominator of 5, 6, and 15 is 30. Now our job is to somehow convert all the bottoms. 30 should be 15. Why the bloody hell is this? Yes, it's 30. 15 won't do it. 15 won't do it because 15 is not a multiple of 6, nor is a multiple of 5. All being stupid. The least common denominator is 15. This is what I mean. If you do it methodically, then whatever the answer appears at the end, that is the answer. You know how to second guess it. I was second guessing it. 30 is the smallest number, which happens to be the multiple of 5, 6, and 15. Now our job is to convert all of this denominator to 30. Let's look at the first one. 2 over 5. Let's, let's start from here so we have some room. 2 over 5. What can I multiply 5 by to make it 30? The answer is 6. If you're going to multiply the bottom by, five, bottom by 6, you must multiply the top by 6. You can't just do the bottom or the top itself. It has to be the same. Whatever treatment you're going to give it to the bottom, you have to give the same treatment to the top. Otherwise, the value will change. But 6 divided by 6 is 1. 6 divided by 6 is 1. Therefore, multiplying 2 fifths by 1 does not change its value. And now we have it. We have 12 over 30. There you go. That's first guy. That's first down. Let's look at the second one. One sixth. How can we convert the bottom into 30? That's very straightforward. Multiply top and bottom by 5. Because 6 times 5 is 30. 1 times 5 is 5. And on the bottom we'll end up with 30. That one is done. We move on to the third one. 4 over 15. 
how can you convert 15 into a 30? Well, very simple, multiply it by 2. And if, you if you're going to multiply the bottom by 2, you must multiply the top by 2. And that gives us 8 over 30. There we go. We are almost done. Now we have to simply arrange them. We were asked to arrange them. Now we have to simply arrange them. Since the bottom is the same, since they have the same denominator, which was the whole bloody point, we wanted the denominator to be common. Now that we have the common denominator, we no longer have to worry about the denominator because the denominator ceases to play any role. In order to compare this quantity, all you have to do is look at the numerator, the top part. And just arrange them. They, tell, they ask us to arrange this. 5 is the smallest one, so that goes first. 5, five is the smallest one. Five. 5 is the smallest one, but I don't want to write 530 here, that's going to confuse you here. That's the smallest one, let's talk about it. This, is, this was the smallest one, and where did it come from? It came from 1 sixth. So 1 sixth was the smallest one. Then we have 8, that's the next one. 830th, 830th came from 4 15th. And finally, 1230th came from 2 5th. There we go, we have arranged them. We have arranged them from least to greatest. I'm going to erase this part so you can see it. This is the least and this is the greatest. That's it. And that guy goes in the middle. Now they are arranged in order. Do you understand? Let's do one more problem, number two, which, which, is, which, is, which does not have to do with least common denominator, it has to be, do with decimal, but let's just get it out of the way. So that was it. The next one says compare nine point one four versus nine and one sixth. Let's see what we can do here. If you're going to sit there to take this exam, the T's, there are some basic things in arithmetic that you are expected to know. Fundamental things, such as your tenths. You have to know your tenths. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, so on and so forth. How much they are in terms of decimal, how much they are in terms of percentages. Similarly, you are expected to know your fifths. Eventually, I'll probably make a video on those fifths and the tenth. But right now, in order to compare these two quantities, we have to know, somehow we have to figure out 1 6. What is 1 6 in decimal? If we can figure out what 1 6 is in decimal, then we can compare the two. But right now we do not know that. In order to figure out what 1 6 is in terms of decimal, you have to know your thirds. Let's take a look at it. A third, a third is approximately 0.33. In other words, a third of a dollar, a third of a dollar, if you have one dollar, and if you divide it into three equal parts, that's going to give you 33 cents. Why approximately? Because 33 times 3 is 99, and dollar has 100 cents. Technically, it's 33 and one-third cents, but one-third cents are very difficult to find. So it's approximately 33. Keep listening. Okay, keep listening. Here's the next part. We are taking, what are we here to do? We are here to prepare for T's. And T's is not open heart surgery. Precision is not required. Common sense is what is required here. If you try to sit there and try to be a goody two-shoe, try to do exact precise work, you'll never get anywhere. So now we're going to go one step further. Even though one-third is approximately 33, we're going to pretend it's 32. Just keep listening to me. All right? If one-third is approximately 32, then one-sixth, we're dealing with one-sixth. One-sixth is simply a half of that amount. You see? One half times one third is going to give us one sixth. And half of that amount, half of 32, is 16. One sixth is approximately 16. You should know that. You should know that by heart. Do you understand? Don't make a fuss about it. Don't, don't turn it into a freak show by taking 33 as 0.3333 and try to figure out how, what is half of that. It's approximate. A third is approximately 32 cents. Half of that will be 16 cents. We are done. We are, asked, we are being asked to compare 9.14 versus 9 and 1 6. 
Well, 9 and 1 6, we just found out, is simply 9.16. Which one do you suppose is greater? Of course, 9.16 is greater. That's all. You're done. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.